body surface area is the square of the height. If the body mass index is about 20, we give 0. If between 18.5 to 20, we give 1. If it is less than 18.5, we give 2. And the second part of the mast is the weight loss in the 3 to 6, in the last 3 to 6 months. If it is less than 5%, 0. If it is between 5 to 10%, we give 1. If it is more than 10%, we give 2. And the third part of mass is when the acute disease, when the acute disease affect the patient, and there has been or is likely to be no or very little nutritional intake, either after the acute disease, the patient enter into the state of no nutritional intake or little nutritional intake for more than five days, we give it two. If the total of this mass equal to zero, we call it low. If it is equal to one, medium, we call it medium. If it is two or more, we call it high. Zero, need routine clinical care, while medium observation while two we should treat as malnutrition state what are the types of surgical nutrition surgical nutrition either enteral nutrition or parenteral nutrition let us start with enteral nutrition the definition of enteral nutrition is delivery of a nutrient into G into GIT gastrointestinal tract. The indication of this when we use enteral nutrition in mal, mal, mal in malnourished surgical patient. Use it in patient in whom oral intake is inadequate or impossible while having a, funct a functional accessible GIT. يعني GIT normal for digestion and absorption لكن the patient ما يستطيع أن يأكل أو يدخل الأكل إلى المعدة مالته and this situation like comatose patient comatose patient severe dysphagia for any cause Head and neck surgery after head and neck surgery in a critically ill patient like after severe trauma and in low output anterior cutaneous fistula. Low output anterior cutaneous fistula that means it discharges less than 500 ml per day when there is a fistula between the intestine and the skin and the content of the, of the intestine leaks. To leak to the outside, we call it enterocutaneous fistula. Maybe high output or low output. In low output, some patient need enteral nutrition. What are the root of administration of this enteral nutrition? Either sip feeding, sip feeding means small amount of food whole food by mouth fluid by as a fluid formula i mean we give a small small amount of food in the fluid formula and all these all the amount he needed should be given by the mouth this is called sip feeding or through tube, tube feeding technique, either nasogastric tube, we call it Riles tube, 
to the tube enter through the nose into the stomach or gas through gastrostomic tube tube enter directly into the stomach or from the skin to the stomach or the genostomic tube also tube enter directly from the outside from the skin through in the abdomen and to the jujin. What about the type of flu? Administration formula. If it is through gastrostomy, we should give liquid diet like juice and milk. Through jejunostomy, also you can give the same diet, but it's preferable to give partial digested or elemental formula, special formula, uh, already prepared. It is isotonic sterile formula, and give at a slow rate and gradually increasing the rate and tonicity. What are the complications of this method? Enteral nutrition. Either mechanical complications, mechanical complications regarding the tube, the tube may be malposition, displacement, displaced from the site to be inserted outside the stomach, for example, or the gate outside the jejunum, or blockage, or breakage, or leakage from the tube. Also, that you may cause erosion of the skin or mucosa. Second complication of enteral feeding is infection problem, which is either exogenous in handling of the food, cause contamination, or endogenous from the patient. Also, GIT complications like diarrhea, bloating, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, constipation. Also, metabolic complications like electrolyte imbalance and malnutrition. Chemical complications like direct infections. These are the most important complications. What the care should be? What the care that we should do for the tube, for the inserted tube? We should flush the tube with the water at least twice per day. And if it is obstructed with diet, semi-solid diet, we can install chemotrypsin through the tube and it will resolve the problem. The second type of surgical nutrition is total parenteral nutrition. The definition of total barometer nutrition is a provision of all nutritional requirements through intravenous route without use of GIT. Now, we don't use GIT. We use it from the treatment of the treatment of the treatment of the treatment. For example, we use total barometer nutrition. Indications. The principal indication is in seriously ill patients Suffering from protein calorie malnutrition, where the use of GIT for feeding is not possible. يعني لا ما نقدر ندخل تيو والبيشنت في حالة تعبانة seriously ill. Okay. وحتى أحيانا إذا قدرنا ندخل تيو ما يستفاد من التيو من التغذية من خلال الجهاز الهضمي. وهاي الحالة مثلا متى تحدث؟ when GIT first when GIT is blocked like after stricture you لازم or extrinsic mass or GIT is short like in short gut syndrome أحيانا يصير بعض البيشنت خصوصا بالأولد ايج يصير انسداد في شرايين الأمعاء وينتهي بجانجرين الأمعاء فمثلا نضطر إلى قص معظم الأمعاء فننتهي بحالة مثلا اسمها شورت جات سندرا 
or when the GIT is fistulated, especially after high output anterior cutaneous fistula that discharge more than 500 mol per day, or when GIT is inflamed, like after inflammatory bowel disease, after ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Or when GIT cannot cope the requirement, GIT may get the sedil ihtiyajat. Mathalan, after severe trauma or hypercatabolic state. Also, after radiation enteritis. After radiation, there will be mucositis, for example, of the uh, lining of the mucosa of the intestine, and the patient need total barter nutrition or when there is moderate